So we're back to another episode of Simon Says, and welcome, Lyra here. Hello. And we're just talking about uh, different things earlier, but another thing that has been happening recently. Now this is the first week of June. Recently is the controversial comedian Jocelyn Chia, right? Yep. Just happened more two days ago. So, what's your take on this? Maybe you you like to just sum up what actually took place. Yeah, shit. Um, so basically, I don't think I think people took it out of context when I look at the whole video. Mm-hmm. You just watched it, right? I mean, a moment ago. Yeah, because she didn't really reference MH three seventy. Yep. I mean, even if she did, I mean, those were facts. I, I guess comedians they have to be able to just crack some jokes and and basically. I mean, just basically that's what they do. Mm-hmm. I mean, the stand-up comedians, that's what they do. So yep. what she did was she basically say because she actually referenced this whole thing. I mean, Malaysians and Singaporeans, we always have that sort of rivalry. <laughs> it's almost like it's a bad breakup sort of scenario. And that's basically what she was joking about. I mean, this whole thing about Malaysia and Singapore, where Singapore has been progressing very well and you have this... Uh, ex-boyfriend that is coming back and <laughs> asking so basically because of all these sort of things then she say some airplanes don't fly some yeah she's just like kind of like jabbing uh, Malaysian and, and we know Malaysian Singapore if we don't jab each other it's like it's not normal right <laughs> I mean over anything transportation food currency <laughs> lifestyle <laughs> bakute, have land or don't have land can use your sports car or cannot use your sports car. Yep. You know, people always joke in Singapore, you can have the best and most expensive car, but you can't run. So it, it's like, what's the video? Actually, my first reaction is, is very similar to you, to yours. And after kind of watch the 80 plus second clip, what's the big deal? And I, I think we are in the, the kind of cycle, right? The, the, the social political cycle where people are just so easily offended. I mean, what's the term people use? Uh, snowflakes. Snowflakes. You know, it, uh, if you heard the term snowflakes, right? I mean, of course, it's a very westernized term. Basically, it's like you melt so easily. Just a little bit of criticism, you're like melted already. And that's the kind of impression I felt. And now let's look at some uh, reaction, right? So this is by Harith Iskandar, of course, himself a stand-up com- comedian. Actually, I would say right now, I'm not impressed with what he said because he said, look, Freedom of expression is necessary. Of course, you are a comedian. You, you, it's your livelihood. But certain line must not be crossed. Who determined the line? And it's like, sorry, Harris, I think you are being up high mighty, yep. self-righteous. But to his defense, I think he felt, he, he said he received a lot of messages. You know, I, I kind of watched his video reaction. And I think he felt compelled to respond But how how to respond? Because obviously there's a lot of outrage, not his fault. But if you say what we say, I think people will be even more outraged at him. (laughs) (laughs) So on one hand, I do understand. But on the other hand, I felt like he missed an opportunity to just tell people, look, chill, snowflakes. And we're a comedian. We say what we want. And if you don't want it, don't come to our show. I mean, even if you just look at the British comedian, uh, Russell... Evan? No. What's his name? Um, Katy Perry's mm. ex-husband. But, I mean, he was able to joke about all these sort of things. I mean, even COVID and things like that. And I guess the, the essence of mm. comedy is really missing here because yep. you are able to look at all this sarcasm and still have a laugh. So, so that's one of the things that is kind of... Um, I mean, if we again, we look at the American example, you know, they, they used to... The late night shows, you know, if you go to New York, I think a few years ago you went to New York, right? And one of the bucket lists, if you're able to do, is to attend the late night show. And that's what people tell you. But these days, if you watch the late night show, it's just boring, boring, boring because it's so partisan. And they're like, they can't take a joke. Hmm. So it's almost like the comedy has been hijacked by politics. And I think that's... a, a an indictment of the current state. You can't even joke about certain things. Exactly. So, but, but anyway, uh, it, it's quite interesting that today, I think right now, 8 of June, as we're doing the recording, um, it was reported that um, Chia's 
disappear from her social media presence, right? The Insta is gone, the YouTube is gone, the Facebook is gone, Twitter. and Twitter is gone. Very interesting. I, I mean, w- w- what do you make of that? <laughs> like CCP? Self-imposed? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean... Like Uncle Roger being being banned in... in, in I think he was banned in, in, in Weibo or, or the whole China. I, I, I didn't really follow, but he was basically quote-unquote cancel, right? Yeah, I mean, would you categorize this as a hate speech? No. I, I mean, it, it's a joke. It, it's obviously a joke and the context, it, it's like a monologue. It, it's like quick rapid fire and it, you know, like like how the you know the artists when they do rap, right? Rap, of course, now, now if you know about rap, th- there's a lot of practice, there's a lot of preparation, look at the lines and you know, the black rap culture, they always use the term this. You know, I do this you, this you, that. And it's like, I mean, even in sports, sometimes you look at people and you're like, why are they so childish? It, it's not, it, it's really <laughs> a manufacture this, you know. And, and I think, of course, if you look at sports, I think the most culture sports will be like, like tennis like that. Nobody is screaming at each other about football, basketball, there's a lot of this. And sometimes you see the player, press conference, they were attacking each other and then all of a sudden yep. they were like, Eating in each other's house, yeah. partying and things like that. It's a, hey, what's happening here? It, it, it's <laughs> like a show because, hey, we are in a arts and entertainment realm. We have to entertain people. So when people get offended with this, I I, I don't know. It, it is. It, I I mean, not all form of art is suitable for everyone. Right? Now, of course, to be fair, we did see some reactions from. From, from the MH370 uh, family member. But yeah. a- again, she didn't even reference that. She just said some plain don't land. And I mean, if you say that to Asia, I, I think it's fair. I mean, recently Asia has been terrible, right? So many <laughs> re- cancellation and things like yep. that and, and re- rebooking and things like that. So, but I guess if people want to be offended at anything, they can. I mean, of course, mm. they, they are free to do that. I mean, we, are, we live in a free country. Now, my question is, is it justifiable for people to feel outraged that you are attacking my family member who are dead already? I would say... Because they- that seems to be the reactions. Uh, now, of course, I, I read all the... A few articles, not, not that many... And I, I find one or two reference to family member. I mean, you can always go and find someone who will give you a quote that you want. But does that represent the outrage of the people? Do you think? I, mean, I think reaction is really the right word because it, it's almost like you intuitively just react, just mm. felt like it is the right thing to do. Just like, I mean, people, I, I guess... I mean, I feel bad for these Malaysians that really fail to appreciate the joke. Mm-hmm. I mean, whether or not it's a great joke or bad joke, that, that aside, joke is still a joke. So I think we shouldn't really take it out of context. I mean, it's so bad that even Singaporean <laughs> High Commissioner to Malaysia basically apologizes on her behalf. Who is She's no longer a Singaporean. Yeah, yeah. they had to stress that she, she was no longer a Singaporean. Did not reflect our views. <laughs> But excuse me, Malaysia and Singapore diss at each other. Common, right? Common. I mean, we, we do that all the time. <laughs> so, but anyway, I, I mean, t- uh, of course, one of the most, I, I don't know, I don't want to say, I don't want to say childish, but I'm no youth wanted to protest in yeah. front of the <laughs> US Embassy. I, I mean, of course, now it's at AGM and they need some publicity. So I'm going to say that they needed some limelight. Of course. <laughs> and, but since we talk about AMNO, very interestingly, let's pivot to another discussion, which, um, because recently, you know, both of us, we have been listening to Kaluas Kejat by KJ and Shario, and we thought they were pretty entertaining mm-hmm. and not only entertaining, I, I think pretty insightful and I have heard positive comment on both of them, the fact that they dare to raise the issue. And remember the other day we were having a discussion and said, if they were still in AMNO or government, would they be able to do a podcast like that? I don't think so. Mm. And then we go to the whole discussion. Is there high-ranking or influential member of DAP, for example, having this kind of podcast? 
No. No, exactly. And and go back to what we discussed in the earlier episodes, uh, the Pharma Naga episode. We say the the moment the back bencher becomes the front bench minister, he or she stop having the ability to comment. Now yeah. they will say they will say, Oh, this is political discipline. But on the other hand, you are first and foremost elected by people. And if people have an issue, you should at least try to entertain them. Yeah. And at least say, okay, I'll try to raise it. But seems like we don't have... Uh, but of course, to be fair, we don't really have that kind of culture in Malaysia. You agree? Yeah. No, I think it was interesting because in one of the episodes, KJ and Sharil basically say, well, our job is to critique. I mean, why else are we here? We are here to... Bore because up, you're Kaloa already. Kaloa is a good job. But in a way, it, it, it kind of highlights the different role, right? If you're in government. Um, I, I mean, we, we look at the recent debt ceiling discussion and... You know, those people who are more, who are closer to Speaker McCarthy and things like that, then towards the end, they kind of zip themselves. Then people mm. who are not so close. I, I guess that's the nature of politics, right? Depending where you stand for on a given issue. And the fact KJ and Shario could speak is because their proximity away from, quote unquote, their former party. Yeah. And of course, in recent time, we, we have seen... Um, kind of reporting and I mean KJ did not confirm it directly that Basatu is actually courting him but he did kind of say in very general sense you know if I join another party I need to think so so the, I, I think he kind of hinted that he was courted mm. by them but he didn't confirm specifically Yep. but just a couple of days ago he says that he would consider forming a party now of course when Ong Kiamin was doing an episode with them, they were just joking, why don't they all form, form a party? All the Kaloas Kijak people. And I, I tell you, it's not as crazy as you think it is because here we have, you know, we we, we always been saying, look, we want a two-party system. But two-party system, you know, you look at New Zealand, look at Australia, look at US, the two-party mm. system kind of failed the people. Yep. Then we, we look at Europe and things like that. They have multiple party system. I don't know, are, are we descending into that? So having some more parties may not necessarily be a bad thing in, from the centralization point of view, I guess. Yeah. Uh, but of course, you don't want to be like Belgium, right? How, how, many, how long did they take to form the government? I Over a year. Over a year, be, because it was so fractured. Um, so we don't want to lose that much efficiency, but at the, at the same time, we don't want this major block, right? Because... Mm when you have two guarantee party, after a while, it doesn't matter who becomes government. So in a way, the last general election kind of, like we didn't even get to two party system and now we have three, uh, I mean, I, I mean, look at Barisan National, could they still be a viable block? Okay, maybe we just deviate a little bit and, and I, I want to ask your opinion. Do you mm. think, okay, first thing, do you think they could be a viable block. And do you think it is a good idea to have more than two blocks in a federal scenario? Well, maybe I should answer the second question first. Yeah, okay. I think it is a good idea. I mean, yes, maybe if you talk about even just a decade ago or two decades ago, it mm -hmm. is unthinkable. Yeah. Because you have two-party system and then uh, basically just one party dominating for... Mm. 60 years so we don't want that I mean we have seen how one party is really just destroying the whole nation yep. but we don't want to come to a situation whereby we are moving closer to what United States are mm. right now whereby you have uni party yep. so it really doesn't matter if you vote one or two mm. because both of them at the end of the day the goal is the same it's just the implementation would look different that's yep. all so almost like providing a smoke screen to the people that oh, an okay, appearance of choice yes so, I mean, I don't want that either mm. because I think the longer we are in the unity government and the longer we don't really do something that is tangible, like I'm talking about reforms and things mm. like that and don't show results to people, probably people are going to succumb to getting used to this sort of system. Yep. It's like, well, it's okay, we tolerate a little bit because, I mean, what we are entering now is really the cultural of tolerance. Mm. I mean, be it good or bad, I don't think it's really a good thing because you're talking about inclusivity, diversity, e 
It where's the competition? Be, yeah, I mean, where's the competition? Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's no people who challenge the status quo. So I don't, I don't want that either. Mm. So I think because of these and the development of the cultures all around the globe, I think we should really move away from two-party system yeah. and you should have like a third force that really is a voice to be reckoned with. So when you have that wrecking ball, I mean, even if you think about Trump, even if he is a Republican, he still presents so much friction to the party itself. Yeah, exactly. I mean, when we talk about the American system, yes, there are two dominant parties, but in fact, there are four factions already. Uh, I mean, you have the establishment Republicans, you have the MAGA under Trump and friends, you have the establishment Democrats, the Obama again, then you have the hard left socialists, the, the Elizabeth Warren, the Bernie Sanders party. Yep. So, Basically, you have four expressions in two container, and the only difference I would say is that Democrats are just a bit more disciplined, and probably uh, Sanders and Warren have been bought over. <laughs> I mean, yeah, and, and, but Trump could not be bought over. That, that's the difference. Um, but I, I fully agree with what you, you say. It, it's like the whole thing about the unity government now, it seems like because they are taking advantage of people's weariness with the backdoor government, too conservative backdoor government, and and they're like, enough of that. Even the Argon say enough of that. So people are not in a political mood for competition. So because of that, because of that, this status quo is tolerated. But I agree with what you're saying. It's like, if we continue to have this unity government, there's no choices, then it gives the government, any government who sits there, the excuse to remain status quo. Mm. And I think we are seeing a bit of that. Yeah. Um, I mean, some people will say we're seeing a lot of that. <laughs> and I, I, I'm still prepared to give them a bit more time. Uh, but after state election, it's still no reform. I think they will be revoked. And especially, especially, I think this is something that Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim has to be aware of who are your greatest supporter? You can't take us for granted. We are the ones, um, you, you know, you look at the, the analysis, the, the, basically the voters who rejected Prekata National, who, 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 we don't want the monocultural, mono-religious kind of structure. Mm. These are your supporters. And yep. if you don't, if you don't give these supporters certain things they want, now of course, they will say, what can we do? What they will do will be, they will just not show up for the next election. And you know what's that is going to happen? That's going to give the the mono culture, mono religious, who, wh whichever form you know, it, it may not, not even be Prakata National in the next election. It could be any other form. And you, you see, when they're together, look, look at what Mahdi was saying, right? Mahdi now say he he's supporting PN. Yeah. And it's like you see, at the end of the day, the, the true color is exposed. They they basically Mahdi's reign has all been about control and. And yeah, of course he wants control and he doesn't want pass. That's why those days he brought Anwar Ibrahim in from Abing and things like that to, to give Barisa National an Islamic credential. And that's the path of the national Islamization. But it, it, it's like his true color is being fully exposed. But anyway, come back to KJ and... No, then the other question, <laughs> Barisa National. Oh yeah, I forgot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, please answer the first well, question. Well, I think... Okay, first one is so you, you agree you, you, you want more than uh, you, you don't want a two-party system but you think more competition is good but what, what is your ideal number for, for Malaysia? I guess I mean we're not looking at big numbers we're, less we than can five start with, yeah okay uh, I, I think I can Between live with three that three to five I think yeah we, we don't want to be like Israel <laughs> 20 parties <laughs> too many, many rounds of election so but going back to the first question whereby mm. on I mean, Barisan National. I think, I mean, I agree with one of, one of the episodes whereby you mentioned that there shouldn't be forever political persecution. Mm -hmm. I mean, if they've proven, I mean, being together with mm -hmm. the right partner, I think the right sort of advisors and right sort of partner in the government would actually help the current, I mean, like um, Barisan National to maybe really achieve a higher destiny you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so maybe I mean if they are doing well why not I mean just I mean previous episode we were just talking about Farmanaga being given 
being renewed the contract because of yep. the past excellent records. I mean, because all we are after is really good governance. So if they are able to prove that they have the ability to really govern well, why not? Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, you look at the, the Indonesian party, right? I mean, the one that that um, Sukarno Suharto, they all, you know, I can't, certainly can't remember the, the name, the, the national party, like, you know, uh, they, they and, and they ruled for so long and then they were kind of defeated, but they are still around because they managed to reform. So so I think it's not such a bad idea, you know, that let, let uh, maybe you want a different name, you know, I, I don't know, some, some, some you, you look at the American politics before they settled for the two, big two, they, they kind of went through many cycles and, and some of the parties gone already. Yep. And they, they, but for most Westminster system, it kind of settled into the big two. La. But I think we, we say three or four or five may be better. Yep. And, and that's where we come into the final point we want to talk about today is KJ kind of talk about the possibility of forming his own party. And we, we know the, the difficulty of political entry level, the barrier to entry level. You know, of course, in the past, even to get the registrar of society to approve a political party is, is near impossible because the ruling party just doesn't want competition. Well, we have Muda. Yeah, well, uh, but they struggle for a long yeah. time. And, but of course, in Sabah and Sarawak, it's very easy because they used to have a lot of party and people just kind of buy the party. So so that's how, like, like, like Star, for example, PBK, for example, are, are older party for different purposes. And you can change the name, you can change the constitution. So that would be one way to form a party. Uh, but of course, the other one would be just start and I don't know. I have a feeling that if, if he forms a party, he will get approved. I think so. And remember, we talk about the the friendly nature of seemingly friendly nature between KJ and Prime Minister. So, but, but what do you think? Is it a good idea? And does he even have the political clout? We we talk about. I can't remember if we talk about here. Uh, his his uh, election contest in Sunai Bulo. Yeah, Sunai Sunai Bulo. Bulo. Yep. So, I mean, he did okay. And, and, and we know quite a bit of non-Malay, middle-class people voted for him. Remember, we did talk about it in our show. We are not that impressed. Me, primarily because, uh, you know, we, we felt like he was riding on Amno's coattail. And also, we're not, we we're generally not impressed with the pandemic management. But mm. that being said, what, what do you think of him alluding to that. Okay, let, let me just quote what he said in Kaloa Skijak, okay? He said, if we are given a second chance in politics, why not start in politics on our own terms? Mm. He was quote saying on his Kaloa Skijak episode on Monday, June the 5th. Then he, he kind of gave a context because he said, Kairi said, joining a new party will require some adjustment because you have to follow the, the principles there. You may not be aligned. Basically, you need to compromise. Form your own party, you don't need to compromise. Now, so, so what, what do you think? Uh, of course, he also kind of say, you know, if you form your own party, you could become, you could lose your own deposit and things like that, kind, kind of alluding to... Perjuang. Uh, <laughs> yeah, actually, he did mention Perjuang in name. So, so what's your take on this? I, I mean, do you think he should do that? Does he still have a role to play in Malaysian politics uh, because some people seem to think that he represents a sort of centrist view. Yeah, I think... Well, I think... if Because I listened to some, of, some episodes of mm. his and I felt like he's probably more liberal than we mm. think. Yeah. Not some... Maybe centrist, a bit like Elon Musk, but... You, you see with how Elon Musk is supporting, mm. I would say he's more of a globalist again. Mm -mm. So Th That's the right assessment, <laughs> I'll, I'll say. And so, I mean, well... Well, not for that, but in the context of the ever-evolving, you know, you have a forced unity government, you have a very monoculture, mono-religious yep. gang out there. Is this a good had to throw into the contest. Uh, I mean, would he attract more voters 
at the expense of the monoculture, mono religious group, or will he be dividing the mo- the, the other gang? You, you see that that will be. I think it will be most appealing to the low information bolters. Mm-hmm. The I mean maybe even youngsters, you know, like generally. I mean when you talk about young, maybe all the way up to forties, fifties. I, I think these group of people might buy into him. Mm. Okay, before you comment further, I mean, I'm just looking at him. Do you feel like some people maybe classify him have like a statesman kind of politician? For sure. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 and I think in Klaus Gleja, he managed to reinforce that, that he is an idea and ideal person. And for that, I mean, I would say I give credit to him because he managed to retain that part of it. I mean, that... The philosophical part of him has always been there. I mean, of course, we disagree with him, the philosophy, but we, we don't disagree with him wanting to be himself to get his support. Yeah. So, so it seems like from the podcast, he managed to create that kind of impression that he is someone with ideas and ideal and he will not compromise. I mean, just like, just like the Democrats, you mentioned that maybe they are just a bit more disciplined. Mm. I think KJ and Sharil they are indeed quite disciplined mm. in terms of them telling the people that we are a principled person. Yep. We will not kowtow to Zahid. And that has been very, very consistent mm. throughout the whole theme of this podcast. And, yep. and they were unafraid to critique like Amno leadership and things like that. So because of that, I think actually it really helped to turn the whole way around. Mm-hmm. And people might have probably forgotten about what he did earlier on, the mismanagement of COVID yep, and things yep. like that. And people might just be... I, I guess we are in an era whereby people are attracted to influencer sort of quality mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and like what well, you say, statesmen. Yep. So I think they do really have this sort of quality. I mean, that's undeniable. There is that charisma, just like Obama. Yep. But time will tell if these values really align with what people really wanted. But for now, yeah. I think, well, I mean, I'm not, I think for him to start out a new party, that's great. Mm. I mean, if you can find like-minded group of people, that's great as well. But yeah. again, because what I perceive now is him being a more globally sort of gang. So maybe it actually helps us to see that, oh, okay, actually these group of politicians are more globalist. Mm. And maybe makes, because most of the time I make decisions by way of elimination. Yeah. So if I see, oh, okay, globalist, eh. <laughs> I will just not vote for this group of people. Yeah, yeah, because that's our. I mean, we have certain value and certain belief, uh, but of course, things are kind of jumbled up. And you know, Malaysia is going through a process where you know we cannot be so. I, I mean, it's almost like our voting pattern will have to be more nuanced. It, it's not so easy as saying, "Oh, this is again. This is what I've been voting for," and even state elections and federal elections will be a bit different. I, I mean we, we kept I yeah. mean we talked to our friend David Tian, right? And and he was saying that yeah state election here is interesting, but state election in Sarawak will be even more interesting because you have the the break uh you have PH and GPS fighting for like eternity. <laughs> they are yeah. in a temporary truce on but in, in Sarawak of course we have seen this model before. Leo Mogi time um with, with the Dayat National Party they were they were Barisan national mm. federal level, but at state level they were yeah. opponent of Tai Mamuk. I don't know, can can that even work? You know, that would be very, very interesting. And we, but yeah, but I think the next time we talk, maybe more development on state election. Yep. Okay, so I think that's all we have for today. So until next time. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>